Joining me now is David Waits. Your Symposium X talk is titled Drop-Based Microfluidics Applications for Materials and Biotech. What are some of the key points you'll be discussing? Well, I'll actually talk about two general uses of microfluidics that we've been working on in my group. The first is uh, the use of microfluidics to make new materials. And I want to try and show two kinds of materials that we've done recently. Uh, one is making amorphous nanoparticles, which we think could be valuable for delivering drugs. Many drugs are very hydrophobic and they're not really available. It prevents drugs being used. Uh, we think with this technology, we might actually make some of the drugs more usable. Uh, these are new drugs. Uh, also, I will uh, discuss uh, making something that uh, maybe you know something about more than I do. Uh, mm -hmm. We're trying to make, show that we can actually make materials with microfluidics. We have mm. to find something that's uh, made of drops. That's an mm -hmm. emulsion. Uh, the, we have to find something still of high value added and something people will pay a lot of money for. And uh, the best thing we could find that we could still bring to market is cosmetics. Aha. So we make cosmetics. And I'd like to show how you can do that and actually show a case where cosmetics were commercialized using microfluidics. And then the second general area that I'll talk about is the use of microfluidics for doing experiments in biotech mm -hmm. and uh, really doing some important new types of experiments where we take advantage of our understanding of materials to allow us to do that. That's so interesting. What are some of the advantages uh, to using microfluidic devices and what types of materials can result from this approach? Well, many different kinds of materials can result. Our focus is all on making materials out of drops uh, the advantage of a drop is it's one fluid and a second fluid and uh, there's a surface tension between the two fluids. It keeps the drop nice and spherical and we use that to build new structures around that. Um, the kinds of materials, uh, all sorts of types of materials can, can result and the real advantage of the microfluidics is that it's a way of really very, very controllably mixing fluids together so we can get really exquisite control and precision of the way, uh, over the way we make the fluids and mix them together. And so we can make new kinds of structures that are very functional. So looking to the near future then, what sorts of applications or devices could we, we see resulting from your work that you are discussing? Um, well, I'd say there are two kinds of applications and two kinds of devices, uh, both of which are already being uh, produced. And so we'll just see more of them. Uh, the first is making materials, uh, and the way I think about that is that uh, many times if you want to make emulsions, they're made in big, huge vats the size of this room, uh, making lots of materials uh, very coarsely, but very effectively, and we'll replace those by very small microfluid devices. Of course, to make lots of materials, we may have to fill the room with these devices, but they're cheap, inexpensive, in inexpensive possibly disposable, and uh, so it, it's, it becomes feasible. So I'd, I'd say that's one class of device. Probably the more uh, important class of device is that a lot of modern biotechnology involves uh, using very small amounts of fluids, primarily recovered in some way from the body, um, and testing these for diagnostic purposes, for treatment purposes, for developing new drugs. And a lot of that now, uh, in the future, I think, will be done with microfluidic devices. Are there still some challenges out there in this field? challenges. There are always challenges. We can always find better things to do, uh, more important things to do. Probably the most immediate challenge uh, for the field is how to make improved devices that we can control their surface properties uh, so we can use them for a lot of different, uh, usually biotechnology uh, materials um, and fluids, and how to uh, make them inexpensively and how to make them really work in a way that will uh, benefit people. My big dream, to be honest, is to make them cheap enough and make the surrounding um, equipment that you need cheap enough that uh, we can uh, make uh, devices that uh, even uh, resource poor countries can use uh, to their benefit. Well, we appreciate you sharing that information with us. David Waits, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.